This is an O-scale representative of Santa Fe's 5001 class 2104. It was converted from a U.S. Hobbies O-scale 5011 class 2104. As those who are familiar with that class will note, this has the shorter 20,000 gallon tender instead of 24,500 gallon tender. It also has an outside bearing lead truck. There are quite a few other details that are different as well. However, this first uh, major class of 2104s for the Santa Fe had essentially the same boiler or cab frame and driver size, trailing truck, a lot of other details in common with the 5011 class. It's not a particularly easy conversion, especially when you do it the way I did it. It's a, one of these things where you just strip the entire boiler down, you remove the cab, you rebuild the cab with a complete back head, and completely redetail the boiler frame, uh, tender, and everything to match the prototype. This one, 5009, uh, exactly matches the details of engine 5009 in the uh, around 1950 time frame, plus or minus a few years. And sitting right in front of it is a second one, which I did at the same time, number 5006. It has very similar detailing, but there are a few differences and the two of them are detailed to be exactly identical to their particular engine number including the slight differences between them. Essentially anything that you could see on the real locomotive you'll see on these uh, two model locomotives. I spared no time and effort to put all of the details on that a person would see if they were standing trackside watching these locomotives. Under the cab you can see the Nathan non-lifting injector and the Westinghouse distributing valve uh, complete with plumbing on both of them and also including control rods with universal joints in them for the control rods to the injector. Notice also that it has a double draw bar which is prototypical and it's correct dimensions for the double draw bar. Moving on down the engine a little bit here we can see the right at the front of the firebox right here is what's called a continuous blowdown valve that had to be scratch built since nobody makes a casting for that also nobody makes a casting for the injector starter valve for the Santa Fe and this is a blowdown valve the big deal here though is that notice that the drivers are in fact Baldwin disc drivers which is correct for the 5001 class those were custom made by Bill Briscoe of Pacific Locomotive and then I added hollow axles if you notice the axles are actually completely hollow they were machined out of thick walled stainless steel tubing to match the actual hollow axles on most modern locomotives. The air tank is also completely redone with a completely redone bracket here. The uh, original air tanks were incorrect for the 5001 plus they were incorrectly mounted. They should be out near the edge of the running board like they are here. That's one of the things that gives these big Santa Fe 210 and 484 s their their big bulky appearance is those large air tanks sitting clear out at the edge of the running boards instead of stuck back under the running boards the way U.S. Hobbies did them. The front end of the locomotive was modified a bit around the pilot area. That outside bearing lead truck does not require as much room under the pilot as the larger pilot truck on the 5011 class so I actually had to shorten the frame a bit and reshape the frame at the pilot and reassemble it all. It has a working flip top stack and all of the other detailing there has been replaced. All the front end detailing is there. 
the anti-rotation device on the bell, the bell cord. You have the whistle rod, which actually right here ends in a small chain that comes out, or a small cord that is, that comes out of a tube to the whistle. And the entire front end has been redetailed with complete plumbing to all of the air pumps and the uh, air pump lubricators have been added complete with all the little tiny uh, oil lines. I had to have a number of custom castings made up uh, specific for these Santa Fe engines because nobody makes them um, so I had to make my own masters and have them cast up. These sand hatches on top of the sand dome those were made up special that's not the way that uh, the model originally came, of course. Of course, all the topside details are replaced on the tender. Uh, on the tender, this hatch on top of the toolbox is my own casting. All the handrails had to be redone as they were incorrect. The oil hatches are custom castings, and the water hatches are also custom castings. Here's a close-up look at the oil hatches, the custom castings I had done for those. In between the two is what on the prototype is a wood block. When the hatch flings backwards like this, it rests on the wood block instead of banging down on the uh, top of the tender. All the uh, footprints in oil were put on here to show where the fireman has uh, stepped in oil from time to time and tracked it all over the top of the tender. I've swung around here to show the rear of engine 5006. I can point out a few things from the rear view. Notice the cab curtains which are all complete. Those are made of actual cloth so they are not rolled up or folded up uh, shim brass or anything. They really are a fine weave cloth to give the best uh, appearance. And then uh, some of the lighting that's on here. If we, uh, if we go to uh, function four, notice the red light on the end of the tender. Okay, That is a red warning light that all Santa Fe engines had that uh, is used whenever they're standing in the clear and not on a train, like standing in the yards clear at night. It's just a red warning light so they don't get uh, rear-ended. In addition to that, we have a little light on the rear of the cab. You notice that go on and off there. That's a special casting that I had made up as well, and it's lighted. That was for the use of the fireman at night when he had to get on top of the tender and uh, fill the water and oil. Zooming up and looking a little bit closer into the cab, you can see the the gauges on the back head. Uh, it has a complete uh, interior cab detail, uh, all complete with gauges that are copied off of real gauges so that they really look like gauges when you see them up close. Now I'll go ahead and run 5006 on out of the siding and headed towards the front of a train so we can actually watch these two monsters operate on a long freight train. The whistle on this is a Santa Fe whistle on a QSI sound system, the QSI Magnum sound system. With the 5006 out of the way, we'll take another quick look at the front end of the 5009 and demonstrate a little bit about the lighting uh, from the front end. 
On the headlight, when you go to it, you also get the uh, number boards. Now those number boards had to be vastly modified from the PSC number boards in order to get that very odd shape and mounting location on the sand dome. Nobody makes a casting for that, so it's very tricky getting those made up just right and illuminated. <clears throat> so the, the number boards operate with the headlight. The class lights, on the other hand, operate independently. So you can either run an extra or a scheduled train, depending on how you, you want to do it. And that's independent on the DCC system. This engine's been sitting a little bit longer than the 5006 was, so it's really necessary to use the cylinder cocks on it when starting up. You can hear me set it now. A little pissed thing is, uh, is the cylinder cocks arming. Now when I start the engine up, you'll hear the cylinder cocks open. You'll hear the whoosh whoosh of those in addition to the chuffing. We have our train all made up with the 5006 on the head end and 5009 just ahead of the caboose on the rear taking a long mixed freight out of town. As you can see he's got a green board now so very shortly he'll be whistling off and heading out of town.
And that pretty well wraps up our trip with the uh, double-headed Texas types.